Hello everyone, my name is Sam Gupta and today's topic is ERP purchase process. If this is your first time buying an ERP, this video will provide you a comprehensive overview of the ERP purchase process. You will learn about the steps involved, your roles and responsibilities, and expectations from each step. Before we start, let's first align on the expectations of this process. If you have never bought an ERP before, the process could feel overwhelming. But if you follow a structured process and have a defined criteria, it will not be as confusing. Most importantly, it will help you select the right ERP software for your business. Because of this overwhelming nature and the risks involved with this purchase, some companies prefer to hire an independent consultant. These consulting companies can help define your requirements, develop purchase criteria and make the right decision. However, not every company will be able to afford their price tax. In addition, although you are going to be investing in the ERP license and services fee for the consultant, you will still need to spend a significant amount of time from your site and ensure that you have resources available for your ERP consultants to be successful. Your consultant will help you with the product and technical expertise, but you need to own the project for it to be successful. Furthermore, ERP discussions will require you to go through hundreds of requirements with dozens of vendors. And if you don't have a structured methodology to evaluate, most solutions might appear similar. As a result, you might select a wrong ERP solution. You need to have a list of requirements and you need to rate each requirement with rankings such as most critical, essential and nice to have. The structured methodology will allow you to back your decisions when you present to your executives. Plus, an ERP project can't be successful until the entire team is convinced of it. If you miss to involve any specific function, you might miss to incorporate their needs and because of that, they might not be able to use the product. The more you involve your team during the evaluation process, the higher chances you'll have of the project's success. Also, since each business and ERP project is unique, you need to be ready for surprises during the project. Finally, you can't solely rely on your consultant's claims. You need to do a ton of research from credible sources, blogs and YouTube videos to reduce risks and detect your consultant's claims of overcommitments. While the process could vary depending upon the complexity and size of the business, an ERP purchase process contains 6 to 10 steps. We are going to review 10 most common steps that we typically notice with an ERP implementation. The process starts with an introduction call followed by the high level discovery with the champion. The high level discovery could be combined with a high level demo or there could be a separate step for it. Until this point, your team will most likely not be involved. You might have a couple of team members from your side if you may not have answers for consultants questions. The next step including SME visit, detailed discovery with your subject matter experts and a scripted demo will require a significant amount of time from your team. The steps POC and day in the life demo are generally optional if your processes may not be as complex and may not have high risk technical components or integration involved. The process will conclude with the scope discussion and SOW negotiation. These steps will allow you to compare the finalist and move forward with the one you feel most comfortable with. Once you have signed the papers, you will be ready for your ERP implementation. Now we are going to review these steps in detail. The process typically starts with the introduction call. It could be directly with the consultant or with the publisher. If you are not familiar with the relationship between ERP publisher and the reseller, the publishers are essentially the manufacturer of the software products and in most cases resell through their distributors which are also known as 
ERP consulting companies or the resellers. If you are engaged with a publisher, the purpose of the intro call would be to go through a series of questions to identify the right reseller for you. Most publishers are large Fortune 500 companies such as SAP or Microsoft. So your contact point there would be the sales development reps who are early in their career and have very little implementation experience. You might feel their limited experience during your conversation with them. Their role is to find the right consultant for you. You could also skip this step by looking up in Google for your local reseller. Since the publishers are of larger size, sometimes it could take weeks before you hear from them. If you are in a rush, you'll get faster response from your local resellers. The best way to find your local reseller would be to re search in Google with queries like Acumatica Toronto or ERP Consultant Ontario. Basically, you are looking for the city and the product or expertise you are interested in. While searching in Google, be careful for directories or recommendation companies such as Software Advice or Software Connect. They will appear at the top in search results due to their domain rankings. But the only value they add is to go through the similar set of questions as the sales rep with the publisher would and further delay your process. The consultants also pay for each lead they acquire through these directories. So while these directories would claim that their role is to recommend the right consultant, their recommendations include the select few who buy leads from them. Irrespective of whether you go through your publishers, recommendation companies, or an independent consultant, you will connect with your local ERP consultant who will have the real expertise of implementing the product and can speak intelligently about your requirements. Once you are connected with an ERP consulting company, the intro call with them would assess if the product they represent could work for your business processes. This call would be short with 25 to 30 minutes with each consultant. To make the process less overwhelming for you, make a good list with columns such as ERP consultant, product they represent, the stage, the secondary research. Sometimes the consultant would carry multiple products. If you consider more than one product through a consultant, you may want to have two rows for such consultants. Finally, the most important column of this sheet would be the, the secondary research column, where you will research each consultant and product and vet their claims. You might want to keep all the products and consultants in sync with their stages. Otherwise, things will likely get mixed. The outcome of this step would be to finalize three or four products and consultants and have a few as a backup for the next stage of high-level discovery. The high-level discovery step is slightly more detailed than the introduction step. In this step, the consultant will continue evaluating if the product still a right fit through the series of detailed questions such as number of sites, number of legal entities, number of levels in the bomb, and the handshake of different teams as an order moves through its stages. They might have these questions covering each process areas such as sizing in org, order management, products, procurement, finance, and reporting. The discovery call is still at a very high level, and the purpose of this call is to gather enough details to assess the fit, alignment on expectations, including budget, and identify scope for the demo. As most high-level discoveries are conducted with champions or a couple of members, depending upon how deeply the champion understand the entire business, you may want to document these questions for later stages so none of the questions remain unaddressed and nothing falls through the cracks. The total time required for these calls could be two to four hours with each consultant. To reduce this time, you might want to prepare a package that you could send to all your consultants after your first call as they are likely to have similar questions. The credible consultants would be prepared for these calls and would not waste your time with unnecessary questions. The unprepared consultants, however, are likely to start with questions such as, tell me how you do your business, which should be a red flag for you 
that they either don't have experience with your industry or are too unprepared. The high level demo step could be combined with the high level discovery step or it could be a step on its own depending upon how your consultants like to work. Some consultants like to demo as they conduct the discovery while the other consultants might be slightly afraid in showing you a system without your configuration or data as you might not be able to relate with it and might reject the product without understanding its capabilities fully. The high level demo is meant for the audience who may have some familiarity with the ERP systems so you may not want to invite your entire team just yet. The purpose of this demo is to provide you an initial glimpse of the product so you feel okay in presenting it to your team. You may end up projecting a couple of options and choosing from your backup if the product or vendor appears too far off from their claims. So this step provides you a good temperature check before taking too much time from your team. This step may require one to two hours of time with each consultant. During this demo, you may want to pay close attention to how the look and feel changes from screen to screen. Otherwise, you might be looking at an integrated product or a product with add-ons. The outcome of this step would be to finalize three or four consultants for the site visit. This is perhaps the most critical step of the process as without this step, your risk would be higher during the implementation phase. This step helps connect the dots for ERP consultants by reviewing the processes firsthand and interviewing your users. Your consultants will find areas or details through steps that may have been missed as you didn't remember to mention them or deem them as not as important. This step also offers an excellent opportunity to introduce the consultant with your team. The face-to-face -face interaction would make them more comfortable working with them. It could also be an excellent opportunity to ask the unaddressed questions from your team that need to be answered before the scripted demo. The total time required for this step could be two to four hours, depending upon your number of sites and the size of your operations. During this step, some consultants may shoot videos to train their team members unless you have a confidential reason for not allowing the recording of video at your premises allowing them will help reduce the risks the erp project generally will have 10 to 15 team members with varying expertise and it's hard to invite all of them for the site visit that's why videos will play an important role to help other team members visualize your processes. Finally, if a consultant is not willing to commit for an on-site visit, you might not want to continue with them. As for manufacturing or distribution businesses with field operations, this step is absolutely essential. By this step, you will have a good understanding of unaddressed questions and if you might need to have slightly deeper calls with your subject matter experts on a one-to-one -one basis to get these questions answered. During this step, the consultant may ask your subject matter experts to demo your existing systems or processes. In this step, the questions will be slightly more detailed, like show me the algorithm of how you plan for your inventory or show me your consolidation process. The total time required for this step could be two to four hours with each consultant. The subject matter experts are the folks such as your VP of sales or the logistics operations manager, the person who's intimately familiar with the process of their function. In most cases, these subject matter experts are the only ones who might be aware of such details. So it's very likely they will be extremely busy and it will be very hard to get hold of them. Consequently, you may want to watch their time and keep them only for crucial questions. You may also want to watch for your subject matter experts reactions if they are convinced of consultants expertise. The consultant may lack depth if they can't impress your subject matter experts. The outcome of this step is to get buy-in from all your stakeholders before you move to the scripted demo. The scripted demo is one of the most critical steps of the process. 
the purpose of this step is to provide your team with a better sense of the platform so they are able to visualize their daily jobs in the tool. The consultant might take one to two weeks to prepare for the demo as they need to configure the system align with your requirements and test with your data so that the demo goes smoothly. This is also the first time when your entire team might be together in one room. It's also likely that the consultant will bring a ton of team members with varying expertise from their side. The demo may also require collaborating with remote team members as to each team member might show the processes from their systems. The demo would require four to eight hours with each consultant. Since your executives are going to be involved with the demo, you may want to agree on the agenda and the script of the demo and ask your consultant to review the script right before the demo to align the expectations. For the longer demos, it's not very unlikely to divide the, the demos in various sections and communicate it beforehand. So each of the SMEs could be present in their respective sessions. During the demo, if the consultant seems to be brushing off on key details, it could be an indication of their overcommitment. Also, pay attention if the consultant is showing a demo through the deck or in the product. Sometimes they might be showing just a concept and the product may still be under development. Through this step, you will get a better sense of the platform if your team will be successful on the product or not. The proof of concept or a POC step is only required if your implementation may be complex or may require technical development or integration. Since it would be for the requirements for which out of the box functionality may not be available, a demo would not be possible. To ensure that the consultant would be able to deliver the functionality and not over committing, make sure you assess that they have thought through the solution and are able to connect the dots. If you have access to a resource with a technical or software development background, you may want to bring them to the meeting as they will be able to vet the consultant's capabilities better. Also, software development follows a very different methodology than the ERP implementation. So you may ensure that the consultant has software development expertise and crafted the plan aligned with software development delivery methodology. Depending upon the complexity of your, your technical piece, the time required for this step could be anywhere from a couple of hours to days. This step would provide you the understanding of the overall solution, including custom developed and integrated components. Since 90% of the ERP consultants would not have technical or development background, you may want to watch for over commitments. If a consultant seems to be committing for everything without thinking through, it may be a sign of lack of expertise or over commitment. The day in the life demo is to be slightly more detailed than the scripted demo for stakeholders who were not able to relate with the product during a scripted demo. In this demo, the consultant would configure the processes and data for a specific SME and show them how their day would look in the product as they carry their responsibilities. If you have a reserved member who is not likely to open up in a group, you may want to allow them to speak as much as possible by asking open-ended questions. The day in the life demo could be extremely important to ensure everyone's buy-in and to ensure that the project does not get shut down at later phases just because some of the team members were not convinced on the solution. The timeline for the demo could be one to two hours. Finally, if a vendor is not willing to commit for these many demos, it may be a red flag and a sign that the opportunity could be too small for them. By this step, you would have ranked your consultants and identified your finalists to two to three. The purpose of this step is to agree on the scope of software license and the implementation. The consultant may want you to finalize the number of users you would need, their appropriate roles and the privileges required to identify the most accurate code. They will also require tons of details such as functionality and scope and identification of faces 
to accurately quote for their services and identify relevant skill sets required. Since the cost variations could be significant at a later stage, if there was a misalignment in the scope of variables for the quote, you may want to spend enough time to understand the details during this step. This step will provide the consultant enough details to print an official quote. This is the step when you will review the plan presented by your consultants for the first time. The plan will contain all details of project management including scope, schedule, implementation approach, payment terms and cost, roles and responsibilities, and details about support and approach for training. You may want to choose the consultant with the most realistic plan, especially if the consultants have presented the estimates and not the fixed cost. Even in case of the fixed cost, the scope would be fixed and the consultant may charge very high for any scope creep to cover for their margins with a fixed bid. The best approach would be to work with a consultant who has presented the most realistic estimates. Also, just because the vendor quoted higher, you can still go back to them and ask for a price match. In most cases, they might be willing to do it as long as you are being reasonable and can present the competitive quote as evidence. Finally, if other vendors are not willing to move while one vendor seems to be making it easy and provided a lower quote, it could be a sign of overcommitment from that vendor that you absolutely must watch for. To recap, we covered the 10 most common steps of the ERP purchase process, starting with an intro call and ending with SOW negotiation. The site visit would be the most critical step, while the scripted demo would be the second most critical. The proof of concept and day in the life demo could be optional steps if your implementation is not very complex. When you are ready to commit with a consultant, pay very close attention to the fine lines of the contract as they will determine whether your implementation will succeed or fail. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Also, if you would like to see a deeper video on any of the topics discussed, or perhaps one that is customized for your business process, please post and we'll be happy to record them for you. If you need any extra help with your ERP implementation, please feel free to reach out to me directly on my coordinates and I'll be more than happy to guide you. Also, please feel free to connect on LinkedIn or Twitter. We share really exciting content on digital transformation, ERP and marketing automation through our social channels. Once you add us or follow, you will always be updated with the latest and greatest content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please ensure you hit the bell button after subscribing so you are notified with the newer videos right away. Also, if you like this content, please help spread the word out on social channel or quote us on your blog post. Thanks again and see you around.